So guys, uh, here are a few use cases which I try to pick up uh, specifically for the clustering, guys. Okay, so there is a third party vendor called as Kismetrics. So basically this company masters in generating customer specific insights. Okay, so they do lots of clustering based on, you know, a lot of aspects of uh, customers. I mean, they actually come up with uh, different groups of customers so that they can, uh, so that the users can rightly target the customers based upon the customer groups. So how they'll come up with the customer groups instead of uh, in, a, in an in traditional approach, usually what, uh, I mean, usually what businesses will do is uh, they actually look at the customer profile, like uh, customer geographic location, customer social status, and few other aspects of customer through which they'll try to come up with the groups and they'll try to target the customers using those ca different categories or using those different groups. But however, since the evolution of, uh, you know, uh, internet, social media, and a lot more stuff, application, uh, pro uh, analyzing the customers using application, clickstream logs. So based on clickstream logs, social media, and some other stuff, you know, these guys have come up with a very, um, a very niche uh, way of identifying the groups based on all these aspects, guys. So if you look at uh, this specific slide, you guys can see that uh, they have actually mined certain data out of the customer behavior, like uh, uh, in, in general, you know, where the customers are coming from, I mean, from which application the customers are directly launch, logging into your application. Or, uh, visited sites and signed up, when did uh, the user signed up and uh, entered checkout. See, users can actually, for instance, if it's an e-commerce kind of application, the major problem of e-commerce uh, domain is people do log into the uh, e-commerce websites and they do look at the products and they do prepare the carts. But, but just before checking out the cart, most of uh, you know users actually will uh, uh, skip from that step. So they'll try to analyze, understand why users are preparing the uh, preparing up, coming up to prepare uh, preparation of the cart, and from finally they'll the upscan. So they so they'll try to mine all these things, even using all these uh, different parameters, guys, and finally purchased. I mean, you guys can also see. So the number of users visiting, say for a particular time interval is around 2,615, but the, the users who are really signing up into the application are drastically reduced. You can say almost 33% of the actual number of uh, uh, users who was actually visiting the site. And they're again checking out. I mean, the number of users who really prepared the cart is not even close to 50%, it's like almost 379, like 400 approximately. And uh, here, the actual users getting converged are very, very less, like 67 percentage. So 2.6 percentage out of the actual number of users visiting the website. So here, the purpose of doing seg uh, clustering, I mean, uh, purpose of doing clustering of uh, uh, customers or customer segmentation, both one and the same, segmenting the customers is to actually bring up the number of, the, to actually bring up the percentage of conversion uh, conversions happening over the website. When I say conversions, I mean through the entire, uh, I mean until the user makes some transactions, we can say it is as a conversion for specifically for e-commerce kind of applications, guys. And as I already mentioned, uh, these guys, you know, leverage on various advanced data sets to actually come up with the customer segmentation. Okay, so let's move further. And uh, we, I have uh, picked up another few examples, like uh, Twitter is one of the well-known example. So basically, Twitter also does customer segmentation. Uh, they uh, they do a lot of stuff. They they do customer segmentation. They might do uh, the tweet segmentation for identifying the trends with the tweets. 
uh, and few other uh, stuff also specific to the clustering. If you look at the Twitter, so here is some uh, information about the Twitter itself. However, I'm sure that pretty much everyone might be knowing about the Twitter. So Twitter also does uh, customer segmentation or tweet segmentation based on various uh, various uh, seg various data sets, folks. And uh, here it says like uh, Twitter is a social networking website and a micro blogging service where people broadcast short public messages known as tweets, and uh, these tweets are at most 140 characters long and once posted a tweet is instantly published on the feed of all the for all the users who are following and is visible publicly over the Twitter site and uh, these tweets are sometimes annotated with keywords as uh, in a style of hash so if you wanted to highlight your tweet to a specific category they can highlight that uh, tweet using uh, I mean sorry they can highlight the tweet for based on specific keywords which are more relevant to what you are actually talking about and that uh, keywords you can use like uh, hash uh, okay are marked as uh, directed at at another user with syntax like okay so at the rate so if you want to direct it uh, for another users you can just use at the rate symbol so that it will be directed to that specific user So last but not the least, uh, we do have uh, another third party vendor called as Data Mining Lab. So this Data Mining Lab also does uh, different, uh, diff I mean also solve different problems using you know, clustering aspects, using by running the unsupervised learning techniques. So here you can see you know, for Edureka itself, we have picked up an, uh, an example over here. So maybe Edureka also might want to understand you no know, different customers so they also come up with the, uh, the clustering so that they can rightly target the ads you can see you know different ads have been targeted for the users based on different groups so this however will cover in detail when we look at uh, uh, recommendations framework I mean uh, how we can target uh, users based on the based on clustering of the users okay so that that's an another you know uh, very uh, very general way of targeting the customers so that probably will go into the deeper understanding of that over the recommendations uh, sessions guys okay so folks let's start with uh, you know uh, that's pretty much about you know different use cases of uh, clustering and however we either knowing or unknowingly you guys might be uh, using clustering with done you know from various uh, products for example if you guys might be using some Google News kind of stuff they also do clustering over the news articles as well guys so guys anyhow so enough of, uh, of uh, I mean, examples and all that stuff so let's quickly proceed and try to understand you know the basics of clustering first and then I'll introduce you guys to k-means clustering algorithm along with how the k-means clustering algorithm works and then move on the guys. Okay. So for oops, clustering basics. Uh, so here is some bonus, uh, some content which I have prepared to, to just make you understand what is clusters clustering. So guys, we do have uh, different clusters. In this image, you guys can see that there are three different clusters: cluster zero, two, and cluster one. So based on certain characteristics, we have actually classified all these things into different groups, guys. Okay. The measure, I mean, the most, uh, the key metric which is used to identify the similar items is going to be the distance measure specific to clustering algorithms as opposed to, okay, correlation, I mean, similarity by correlation in recommendations we do have two different metrics one is similarity by distance and the other one is similarity by correlation so here clustering algorithms majorly depend on similarity by distance but various the recommendation algorithms will depend on similarity by correlation so that probably will take it up later let's try to understand uh, how clusters will be formed using this uh, distance metric so cluster analysis or clustering is a task of grouping a set of objects 
in such a way that the objects in the same group so the objects within the same group are treated as a cluster are more similar and the objects within a cluster are more similar in some sense or another so in some or the other way the objects of a group are more similar than that of the objects in the other groups to each other than those of the other groups guys other groups are clusters so both are one and the same again okay so let's consider this uh, small example before we look at the uh, no, actual cluster algorithms so guys i have a question for you here on this slide so you guys should understand this question i mean you guys should treat this slide from right to left but not left to right so starting from uh, here so guys if assume that if you were a librarian okay and you were given with some corpus of books like this so i have given you some corpus of books and i actually asked you to you guys to come up with different categories within the books i want i wanted you guys to actually group the books based on certain similarity similarities so guys can you please tell me what will be your approach to actually categorize the books or else to actually group the books into different clusters so based on so we'll just exclude publications and then consider only author and subject maybe the name of the book guys do you remember in the okay so i'll i'll talk about one issue if you really look at uh, you know only subject for the book and then so usually you know in general if you were given the books so you can look at various parameters like uh, who is the author of the book and what is the title of the book and probably the content within the book and you manually try to read the content and try to come up with the groupings of the books based on either title or you know the actual content within the books itself so you identify different groups like say cultural law books religious science books and then you can be able to categorize them properly with this groupings so let's see if there are any problems with the uh, certain approaches so before we look at the problems so why text clustering so when we are doing text clustering why we need to really leverage on mahout and let's see what is the importance of mahout in case of text clustering so guys if you look at the web 25 billion web pages have been indexed by google search engine okay so google search engine alone has indexed approximately around 25 billion web pages okay over the web throughout the web so if you consider such massive data sets 25 billion web pages okay so doing i mean running some kind of clustering algorithms over such massive data sets could be a nightmare with traditional tools guys so that's where mahout really comes into picture since mahout has got scalable clustering and classification algorithms as opposed to that of other tools where they can run on the standalone environments and estimated text data set size is more than petabyte so here i'm just taking an example of uh, you know to letting you know about the size of the data sets which is approximately around a petabyte and uh, need scalable and scalable clustering and classification algorithms to implement such kind of massive clustering over there so that's where mahout comes into picture so types of clustering so guys mahout offers variety of algorithms to run the clustering over your data sets so the variety of clustering algorithms mahout offers is k means is one of the most popular learning techniques and then fuzzy k means canopy clustering hierarchical clustering and then lda lda is very interesting category i mean interesting type of clustering algorithms which is also 
considered as probabilistic clustering techniques considered under probabilistic clustering techniques and however LDA stands for latent Dirichlet allocation but in Mahut O.9 they have deprecated LDA in the place of LDA they have released another algorithm called as CBB CBB stands for complement sorry collapsed variational base okay so instead of LDA we'll cover CBB in the tomorrow's session books so we'll cover many of these algorithms in tomorrow's session fuzzy k means canopy what is hierarchical what is LDA and today our point of discussion is going to be k means clustering technique so folks again uh, let's consider another use case here let's try to considering these are different movies I have given it to you and our say books which I have given it to you and let's try to cluster these books based on the titles so guys if if I ask you guys to actually come up with groups based on the titles can you tell me how many groups you should be able to find out and in each group what uh, what will be the books in each book so you will end up identifying two categories or two groups within your input data set and if you look at the cluster one you have the Harry Potter series and in the cluster two you have a lot of the rings but are these really is this a right way to do to come up with the clustering guys because if you look at these three books you guys can easily say that all these three belong to only one cluster or one group because all these three movies are fiction in nature so they are all fiction movies so in such a scenario so we should actually group all these entities into one group but we have identified two groups the reason behind that is so the major I mean the core way to come up with the clusters is mainly depends upon the parameters which you choose to run your algorithm here the bottom parameter which we have chosen is only title so since we have chosen title so that's why we have found out two categories over here instead of title if we could have focused on the actual content of the book itself then probably we could have ended up coming up with only single group with the data set guys so here all that I wanted to say is if you select the garbage parameters to do the to run the algorithms then whatever you are going to get is the garbage as the output okay so you should be very careful about the feature selection so you should select the right features to run the algorithm based on your requirement if you choose wrong features your, you will end up creating incorrect clusters okay so since we clustered them on books titles hence lot of the rings went into other cluster even though it belongs to the same genre and then ideally it should have also come it should also come in cluster one as all the three books are based on fiction hence our clustering technique should go through the contents of the books rather than the titles of the book books themselves okay